Today we're going to talk about finding good light. All right, so this is Dylan Golby. Today I'm down in Hoi An with my pal Etienne from Pixavasia. Say hello. Hi, everyone. That's it. Done. What can, where can we find you? What do you do? Ah, uh, okay. So <laughs> I've been running Pixavasia for a number of years. Uh, Pixavasia offers photography tools and workshops in Asia focused on people photography. Right, and so we've just wrapped up uh, a few mornings shooting uh, markets in and around Hoi An with a group that we're leading uh, for a workshop. And one of the questions that we got from quite a few people, uh, Etienne and I kept using the words, good light. Finding the light. Finding the light. And people turned to us and they said, what do you mean when you say good light? And so we had to, you know, we had to explain this a few times. So we've thought about it and broken it down into a few parts that we're going to run through today. So when good we're idea. looking for, yeah, that's a good idea, I thought. It's a yeah, good idea. It's a good it's idea. A good idea. So, yeah. Let's start with the beginning. We're looking for three basic things when we're looking at light. Yeah. And they all relate to the quality of that light. So when we say good light, we're basically talking about any light. But is it good for the situation that we're currently in? Or is it good for the kind of picture we're trying to make? And so we're analyzing basically three, three things when we do that. The first one is? Contrast. Contrast. The second one is? Direction. And the third one is color. So we'll start with contrast. Contrast. So contrast. that's for me the most interesting thing about the light is the amount of contrast it has. To me the difference between a bad light and a good light is the amount of contrast. We call a flat light flat because of the lack of contrast. When it's cloudy, you don't have much highlight and shadows. Things are a bit flat. On the opposite, in the middle of the day, the light has a lot of contrast. So you got a very harsh light, lots of highlight and shadows, a little bit difficult to photograph that. Even though, as Dylan said, every situation, every type of photographer needs a different light. So the best kind of light, in my opinion, is the light which has the right amount of contrast that your camera sensor is able to capture. You'll be able to capture highlight, shadows, details in all of that, and still have a nice uh, rendering like results from your camera. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good point to make, is that our sensors have a, a limited dynamic range. They have a limited amount of light and shadow that they can capture. And the way that you use your light, or the, the amount of contrast that it has, determines how you can or cannot use that light. So your job, your job yeah. as a photographer is to train your eye to find that light. You're right. going to shoot a lot and realize that this kind of light doesn't work for you, this kind of light works for you. Mm -hmm. So in the long term, you are more efficient to focus only on the best light. Oh, the light that you want to use for the style of pictures you make. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think we've had uh, a lack of contrast for the past couple of days. We've had this overcast sky that's it's getting better. It's, it's getting, getting better. It's, it's getting more contrasty. Yeah. yeah we've exactly. had we've had a very flat sort of light, but one of the things that I always look for when I have this overcast light is places where I can give that light direction. And that means direction. Searching out and this is adding contrast. That's basically what it is, right? So we're searching out places like things like a roof coming over the top or something like a door or a window. And we're having light only being able to enter a place from one direction. And that gives us the ability to essentially create the contrast that isn't there from having that slashing hard sunlight coming in. Staying at door, Staying the light is the same on yeah. both of us. Yeah. If I stand in front of a house, in front of the doorway, I am bright, the background is dark. Right. There's a direction, contrast is recreated and things become interesting again. Yep. So if you find something like a dark wall and you move closer to it, you'll get light coming from the outside but not reflecting back off a dark wall and you end up with contrast on a face or whatever you happen to be shooting. So that's direction. I'm always looking, even when there is no apparent direction to the light, I'm always looking for ways to find direction, give it direction. So awnings, walls, doorways, all of those things really helps you to find the, the direction yeah. of the light. Yeah. And uh, the third thing that we notice a lot in Hoi An is, is color. color. The color of the light is really interesting. Uh, we do running photography tours and workshops, shoot a lot of sunrises and sunsets. Sunrise and sunset offer us really interesting lights because of the warmth of the light. The light can be really reddish, orange in the early morning, in the afternoon, which adds some nice friendly warmer tones. I don't know if you know Hoi An in Vietnam, but it's very famous for its yellow buildings. And for example, using bouncing light, light reflecting from a wall, bouncing on someone's face, will add this warmth to it, which works really well on certain, time of, certain types of subjects. 
And I think also that you were talking about sunsets and sunrises having very warm light. People down here have a very deep olive skin. And if you can add that warmth of light to that skin, it just looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, for us white people, we go a little pink, but the locals <laughs> look fantastic in that sort of light. You know? <laughs> Is, that a, is so, it the light or the beer? The uh, light or the beer, it could be both. <laughs> uh, if you're interested to learn more, check pixavasia.com, the link below. We have tons of tutorials and articles about people photography, travel photography in Asia in general. You can learn really a lot there. Join us on the tour next year. So yeah, thank you guys again for watching. I hope that you've learned something. Look forward to a few more videos where we talk about specific types of light, specific images. This guy throwing his thumbs up here and there. He wants you to like the video down below. And I would like you to click subscribe so you can check out more content every Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you guys. <laughs> oh, that was good. We're going home now. We're, we're